Shalom. I'm Rabbi Jonathan Ginsberg of the Ezra Habanim Niles Township Jewish Congregation in Skokie. This video is an attempt to offer a brief explanation about the period between Passover and Shavuot, which Christians call Pentecost. The Torah commands us to count every day between this period, 49 days, and count them day by day. So every night between the second night of Passover until the day before Shavuot, we count day one, day two, day three of the period called the Omer. Now what is the Omer? The Omer was a barley wheat measure. What happened was that the year for harvesting the Omer began at Passover time. That was called the harvest for the Omer, the barley. And so when our ancestors cut it, they also had to get rid of the sourdough, we believe, at that time of the year, which gave rise to the tradition about getting rid of the chametz. So we count every day in this period called the Omer, and it leads up to the day of Shavuot. Now what does it mean? Well, Passover is the preeminent symbol of redemption from slavery, for freedom. It's the message of freedom. Shavuot, according to our rabbis, is the time of the anniversary of the giving of the Ten Commandments. And so what you have here is linked the idea of freedom, but not freedom for its own sake. Freedom to be yoked to God, to follow God's will, to follow God's commandments. And so that is the tradition. Now, this period, sadly, is observed as a semi-morning period. And the reason varies depending on the age of the Jewish people. In the beginning, in the Talmud, there's a source that says that during this period, in a rebellion against Rome in the year 132 to 135, Rabbi Akiva, who was the leading rabbi of the time, many of his disciples died. And we're not sure exactly how many or why they died, but they did die, according to the tradition. Now, there's no mention that we don't have weddings during this period in that source. But, of course, today, many Orthodox Jews won't have any weddings during this period. Many won't cut their hair. They observe those kind of mourning rituals, except on the new moon, Rosh Chodesh, or on a special day, the 33rd day of the 49, which is called Lagba Omer. The reason it's called Lagba Omer is, in Hebrew letters, 30 is Lamed, and 3 is Gimel, the third letter of the alphabet. Together, that spells Lag, the 33rd day of the Omer. Now, if you move to the Middle Ages and the Crusades, the Christian-inspired attacks on the infidel Muslims to recapture Jerusalem, but on the way they killed many Jews, there was so much murder and destruction by the Christians against the Jews in the Three Crusades, that the, one of the rabbis said that we should observe mourning periods during this springtime because of the Crusades, because of that sadness. Then you move on later in history to 1648, when Chalmanitsky, the head Cossack in the Ukraine, rampaged through the Ukraine, slaughtering Jews, destroying towns and villages, untold suffering. And a rabbi at that time said the reason we should observe the semi-mourning of the Omer in this 49-day period is because of the destruction of the Cossacks and the Chalmanitsky pogroms. Rabbi Galinkin, who is one of the leading rabbis, uh, conservative rabbis in Israel, suggests that perhaps we should reinterpret it now because of the Holocaust, just as other ages interpreted it to mourn during this period because of their sadness. Our sadness today primarily was the Holocaust, which ended 60 years ago. He believes we should observe it now. The Rabbinical Assembly, which is the conservative rabbinate, has said that uh, those who wish to uh, not observe all of the restrictions against weddings during this long season should definitely observe the period immediately after Passover in memory of the Holocaust. And many conservative rabbis vary in this tradition. Some observe, uh, of course, all of us observe the restriction against weddings right after Passover because of the Holocaust. Others observe various elements of the period. Um, so anyway, that is a basic explanation of the Omer. The bracha, the blessing of the mitzvah of counting is Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kidshanu, B'mitzvah Tavit Zivanu, Al Sfirat Omer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctifies us by your commandments and commanded us upon the counting of the Omer. Now there's a verse in the book of Psalms that says, Teach me to count my days. Teach us to count our days. We don't count our days very often. And so another homiletical purpose of this commandment would simply be to count our days, to take each day seriously, to say, what did I do good this day? What tikkun olam, what repair of the universe did I affect this day? And so every night before you go to sleep, take the opportunity to do this mitzvah, say the, the blessing, the bracha, and count, keep track each day of the day of the Omer. 
And then, of course, it culminates in the great celebration of the birthday of the Torah with Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Now, Shavuot actually means weeks, W-E-E-K-S, and hence the name of the festival. Shalom.